level up with data binding. All right, so when data binding was introduced back in 2015, and I can't read anything, so I'll just do it from here, my reaction was pretty much, what have we done? Like expressions inside of XML values, this is kind of nuts. But as it turns out, data binding is pretty cool, and I just needed to level up my understanding. And the one thing I love about data binding is you can actually choose how much you want it to use. So it's kind of the beginner level. You get you know, some immediate benefits, like avoiding find view by ID, but that's a start. At the intermediate level, you actually get things like custom binding adapters and observability, while at the expert level, we actually have two-way data binding. And this also allows you to apply observability not only from data to UI, but also from UI to data. So first of all, let's get rid of find view by ID. Um, ex exactly. So first, we, just, we need to enable data binding. Now, all you have to do to do this is actually set data binding enabled equals true in your Gradle file. And then you need to put these little layout wrappers around your file. Um, and you can actually do that in Android Studio automatically now by using by pulling down from the little light bulb icon and saying convert to data binding layout, which is pretty cool. Now, the binding is actually this object you get from inflating the layout with data binding util. And you simply set your attributes and listeners like this, which is pretty cool. But honestly, you're never going to use this because you're actually going to want to use real data binding. Um, so let's talk about binding expressions. And in order to do this, we actually have to make data available to our layout by declaring variables in this data section of our layout. Um, and then we can use expressions in layout XML attributes um, to actually tie that data to views. Now, expressions are actually wrapped in curly braces and prefixed by an at sign. So here are some examples of data binding expressions. Like in this first one, we're assigning a text property to a view model property. In the second one, we're using a custom attribute, height if zero. And in the third one, we're actually using a lambda, which, calls, which gets past the text view and calls on like. And in this fourth one, we're actually using a lambda, which calls on like with a text property of another view in our layout. So you can actually reference other views and pass them in, which is pretty cool. Now, to give data binding access to the view model instance, we just set the binding object like this after inflating the layout. So, pr so pretty straightforward. And um, then our view model is now available to that layout. But the real question is, how does this all work? And, and the answer, of course, is that there is no magic in data binding. Um, but it does seem like magic, and that's because we have built-in binding adapters that handle almost everything. So with data binding, every call to the framework is actually made in a binding adapter. Um, there's no magic. You can actually see the code and use a debugger to navigate through it. The first lines of the method are just checking for changes to only update the UI if necessary. And that last line is actually the set text we're looking for. And there's lots of adapters provided by data binding, and they make it behave intelligently and consistently across all these views. Now, looking at these source files will help to build your own custom binding adapters, which is really how things start to get exciting. So let's talk about binding adapters 101. The adapter is annotated with at binding adapter and takes one or more attribute names. The adapter method takes a view as the first parameter, and you use a subclass of view to restrict it to a specific view type. Any additional parameters are then matched with the data type of the binding expressions. Now, they can just di adapters can differ just by data types. So you can also use adapters to override the behavior for built-in attributes. Now, this makes all image views load using Glide with their source parameters set. But you got to be careful with this, because this is module global. So you might have some really cool uh, side effects of this you might not expect. Um, we also could do a bunch of stuff with advanced binding adapters. So like sometimes that old value is really important, such as with a like color change listener. So if you use the same parameter type for two parameters in a row, the binding compiler will actually pass the old value into the first one, followed by the updated one. And um, also, you can use multiple attributes, which is pretty cool, like in this image view. So you can actually define these multiple attributes here in, when you declare the binding adapter. And then those are both available to, to your code, actually, as you're looking at it. Now, observability is also pretty cool. Um, and we can actually use live data um, to automatically do observation. Um, so this is pretty cool. Uh, we're actually only exposing an immutable class here with an example of this. And the backing field can either be immutable or mediator live data. And then you just expose a live data using Kotlin's getter syntax. And, um, the, and then you need to do one more additional change. You actually need to set the lifecycle owner. So you can observe the live data in your view model with the correct scope. All right, finally, two-way data binding. And honestly, this is really trivial when you're actually using live data. Um, now, you could, of course, use one-way data binding two ways, as in this example uh, of checkbox. But you can actually just use two call this uh, with two-way data binding by using at equals. And the best part of this is we can actually observe live data. So in this case, it's fine to expose immutable live data since it's going to be modified by our view. And then we set the lifecycle owner, and we use the at, at equals notation for the checkbox, and that's it, two-way data binding. Maybe that's not so expert after all. So to learn more, check out the data binding code lab and the documentation on developer.android.com.